I ran some games of Pathfinder playtest a while back. There is some percentage of my audience that doesn't play D&D but watches my videos, so if you aren't aware, there's another RPG system called Pathfinder run by Paizo. Their relationship in history is complicated, to say the least. Paizo was coming out with a new Pathfinder 2nd edition and needed people to playtest it and get feedback on it. We liked the first edition, so we were excited to try it out. One of the interesting things about the playtest material was that the designers before each of the module would write like, this is why we wrote this module, this is what we wanted to test out. Each of the scenarios were varied and trying to gauge something different, like the first module is a basic dungeon crawl, the next tests out overland travel, traps and environmental hazards, one test healing, clerics, another role playing. Our group was playing through the modules one by one. All right, are you guys ready to jump into the wonders of playing Pathfinder? Yeah! And the game starts with the players wading through waist-high mounds of feces, out of which a fecal ooze rises and starts spraying them with waste. <laughs> nah, I get it. Sometimes you just gotta teach the players who's really in charge of this game. <laughs> the group was sneaking past a knoll encampment, trying to get up the side of a mountain. They failed their perception check. It doesn't look like they know that you guys are sneaking up there. I guess you could say they're not very knowledgeable. The knoll's ambush you. Oh, I guess someone's a null it all. The alchemist is dead now. The players were traveling through a hex crawl, trying to uncover what an evil cult called the Night Heralds were doing. The way we did overland travel was we said the group gets six party actions per day. Each action is a four hour period of the day. So two of the actions you will probably have to spend sleeping. It's one action to move, one to search, and one to move stealthily. If you're moving over familiar terrain, you can move one additional space. And if you move over mountains, it's difficult terrain. It takes two actions instead of one. The clock was running as the night heralds were out searching with their own plans. The players start off the adventure down the river, traveling to the lake, where the first enemy that they encounter is a lake monster. I didn't have stats for the lake monster. <clears throat> At the time, it's complicated. So instead, I just flipped around for something that was similar-ish at the moment. Ah, uh, Purple worm. That's close enough. Even though the book says they can't swim, the purple worm's, uh, he's gone to his local pool to, to learn swimming with his little floaties, taking some swim lessons, and now, now he's ready to take on the world. You go, little guy. So that's what they fought. And he has a few levels in the players. Now, before this fight, I'm going to do a little aside about stats and Pathfinder. Let's say that you have a monster that has a set of stats that roughly break down into defenses, hit points, attack, and damage ratings. If you double the monster's stats, it would not actually be twice as powerful. Because now you have a creature who gets hit half as often, meaning its doubled hit points are twice as effective, meaning it lasts four times as long. And while it's out, it's hitting twice as often, dealing twice the damage when it hits. So... Not only is it out four times as long, it's four times as effective on its turns. So really, it's two to the fourth power, or 16 times as powerful. So the power levels can be a little deceptive. Even if you gave it a 10% power boost at each stat for each level, every two levels it would double in power. Bringing this back to Pathfinder, because they add their level to their rolls, a creature with a level or two is way more dangerous than what I was used to in 5e, where they just get, like, some extra hit points and maybe an extra attack. Whoops! The difference between 10th level players and 13th level enemy is a pretty steep power gap. So when an enemy has a few levels on the players, what you have here is most of the party losing half their hit points during the first turn of the first round and having to run away. Actually, after the fact, I discovered that the Sea Serpent, what it's supposed to be, ironically, the stats are mostly the same. So I was originally going to write a joke about how my made-up monster was totally different from the lake monster stats, and it's, it's, turns out they're pretty much the same. There's really weird situation to be in. It makes sense in the module because that's what's supposed to happen. He's represented as this beast that's crazy dangerous and everyone avoids, and he's one of the toughest enemies in the areas, and people are like, we don't we don't go to lake because there's that lake monster who's going to murder everyone. Later on in the Overland module, the group were fighting several rocks. I guess you could say someone's stuck between a rock and a hard place. The enemies all attack you. Eventually, they managed to down one of the rocks, and it tumbled down the hill. I guess that's how we rock and roll. Well, look at that. The rock suddenly rises with one hit point and flies up the hill to attack you. So the module has many different tests, designed to figure out different playstyles and discover what players like, what they don't like. Of course, it wouldn't be complete without it. You've also got a TPK module. One which is designed to fight the players with increasingly challenging encounters until every single player dies. In the module, they suggest not telling the players that they're in a TPK module. I wouldn't do that. I mean, every player is different, but I could definitely see some people 
not being happy to find out part way through. <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous that they have this module in here? I know, right? <laughs> what what were they thinking? Wouldn't it be even weirder to actually, I don't know, play through it? No, that's fine. Let's do all the things that you guys want to do. But just in case you're curious, the TPK module is called the Heroes of Underin, starting off with a party of 12th level adventurers. The entire module takes place in one room in the courtyard of a temple where beneath is a ritual going down that the group is supposed to protect at any cost. But as they start, the ritual draws ire from the hordes and hordes of enemies as they swarm upon the group, coming off of a conveyor belt of murder with little or no time to rest. The monsters come in waves, first slaver demons with haste cast upon them, teleporting in close to the PCs and immediately attack, conveniently, at a range that lets them charge in for the gore attack. After them, the players don't get much time to rest. Two rounds later, they get ambushed by treachery demons, and a toad demon he uses reverse gravity on them and then pelt the characters with spells. And if the characters do approach, they cast mirror image on themselves and escape before fighting again. And if that doesn't kill the PCs, the round after them, six blood demons show up. Now, I'm thinking to myself, six blood demons, that's not going to do much. But aha, the blood demons are just a distraction, so that the actual threat, one 12th level slime demon, shows up and casts cloud kill and stinging cloud on the group, intentionally entering in through the back so that it targets the spellcaster. And after that, dread wraiths arrive and resurrect any dead players to their side as wraiths. And after that, the players make a reflex save as the entire graveyard detonates with a massive explosion as a bunch of ghost mages and a lich appear who have already cast on all their enchantment spells on them like fly, fire shield, mirror image, flying out of range of the player's area of effect spells, while the lich casts dominate on the player's spellcasters so that they can both start firing spells at the players. Then after them, that's when the horde arrives. Up to 12 risen corpses, which the risen corpses are not normal zombies. Oh no, they're all mummies which means that the players will have to roll will save versus being paralyzed with fear and run the risk of getting hit with a mummy rod, which curses them. A banshee is also there. Now, banshees, I should tell you, if you're like me and coming off of D&D, you're probably thinking to yourself, big whoop, they're like fourth level. <laughs> In Pathfinder, they're actually way more powerful than a lich is. Like, yeah, they could totally kick a lich's butt. In second edition Pathfinder, they're 17th level. The Banshee does wail, causing the players to become drained, lowering their maximum HP. But those guys are just a way to keep the players at bay as a Demi-Lich emerges and of course casts spells on the players at a distance. And if all of that still didn't work, two Boar Demons and a Wraith Demon ambush the party. The Boar Demons start out, instead of attacking the players, they attack their magic items. They have abilities that let them infect items, and the players hold onto the items or use them, they get sickened. This is to try and force them to get rid of their magic swag or any other things that they have. And then they teleport in four toad demons, who of course ambush the party and cast four divine decrees at the same time, nuking the area and the players are in for 28 d10 of damage versus four fortitude saves. And if all that still didn't work, if the players are still totally fine, the game has one ace in the hole. They send in just one guy. One guy by himself. A Shemhazian. Just all by himself to GPK the party? I believe in you, little Shemmy. I believe in you. So he goes in there all by himself and petrifies the entire group and eats their corpses. At the end, in the plot line, it's written that the players' deaths were not in vain, and that because of their sacrifice, they helped others get the white axiom needed to defeat the villain. Or, if they actually manage to win, the module is really, really confused and says, Huzzah! You win! But you don't actually use these characters later in the module. One, because they assume they died, and two, because the later modules are testing other stuff. In the material, you make several groups of adventures to test different things, and you're not using the same characters for the entire storyline. There's a main storyline running through the module, and this was kind of a side quest with different characters. So, that's the infamous module. Couldn't get them to play that game, which kind of got a bad reputation in my group. I don't know if it would have been that much fun for the players, but I'd certainly have fun. 